I'm not really going to get a sufficient infinitesimal of this here. But what I would like to say is that um, if we go back to a formula that you learned a long time ago, um, arc length, I'm sorry, uh, sector area. What's going to happen is as we zoom in closer and closer and closer and closer here, we're going to get a part of a circle where this radius here is the same as that radius there, meaning it's a tiny piece of a circle. And this is sector area for a circle. So if we make the delta theta really, really, really small, you can see where I'm going with this, the, the delta to the d, right? Yes. We end up with that um, the area is going to be one half the integral from a to b. Actually, I just put this alpha to beta of r squared d theta. So, there's more I should be talking about, but this gives us the main flavor of what it is that we're trying to do. This is the main piece here. Now, R, remember, is not a constant unless we have a, a, a nice circle centered at the origin. R, in this case, is some function of theta. And I'd like to start with this one. Yeah. Maybe they say pedal. They say one loop. We get the idea. Go ahead and pull out your calculus, please, and graph that. Have your boundaries go from negative one to one in both the x and y direction. Make sure you have polar coordinates and in radius. pedal or loop, as the book calls it, I'm hoping you understand that we need either this one here, or this one here, or this one here, or this one here. We have several options. Now, this has been drawn from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to bring you all the way back to your trigonometry class. I want you to change this, actually. I want you to draw the cosine wave. Try to remember what this does to the graph of a cosine wave. Not in polar coordinates. We're switching it now. It's theta versus r. So this is going to be the actual cosine wave. And I'm going to have you go from 0 to 2 pi. See if you can remember what the heck this means. 
What's the amplitude? One. one. It's a negative. One. That much you remember, right? Okay. I'm going to let you struggle with that for a few minutes. See if you can piece together how to do this. So it starts at one, and then it'll go down. So a zero is one. Yeah, that's a complete The two. Doesn't it stretch it out? I thought it was just to graph the sine or the, the cosine. Is yeah, it? but including the two for the theta. That's a one. I think it goes like this. Mm. He's got a lot of. Or maybe not. Maybe Closer together. It, yeah. There you go. Increases the frequency. It actually crunches it down. A normal cosine wave, this is all review, right? A normal cosine wave goes from 0 to 2 pi. However, so say normal cosine wave goes from 0 to 2 pi. But in this case, we have 2 theta as our domain. If I divide the 2 out, one full period, it's going to go from 0 to pi. So here we go. gives us two full periods of this, right? I want to translate it from what the heck this means into what the heck this means. So here's what's going to happen. When theta equals zero, that's here, right? When theta equals zero, what does r equal? One. So the radius is out at one. Then notice it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it hits a certain point. This is where the radius is equal to zero. So from here to here, this part of the graph is there. The next part, notice the radius is now negative down here. That means whatever angle that we're at is going in the opposite direction. So as I go to here, and by the way, let's prove that it's crossing here at pi over 4 and stuff like that. So when r equals 0, I get cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0, which means 2 theta. Cosine is equal to 0 normally when? Negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 6, 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Right? So on. However, I'm going to divide through by 2. And so on. So it really is crossing at these 5 and 4 places. We knew that from the graph, but it's good analytically to, to break that down. Okay. Let's, get, let's continue comparing this here. So when I'm at pi over 4 here, but at this angle here, this is theta equals pi over 4, the radius is at 0. So it started out at 1, it came back down, it's at 0. Now, from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, you see that there? What's being drawn? 
this bottom one, because R is negative. You see that? So as I go here, it's actually shooting backwards until I get to here. Does that make sense? Explain to a neighbor what I just said. <laughs> Cosine is going to be negative, so it's going to go down towards the negative. Or that's just going to be the particular line that we're referring to, basically. It's easier. calculators um, have a fast enough processor that it just draws it very quickly, but as it draws it, I want you to watch what happens. Oh, okay. hit a uh, window and make sure the data goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then quit out of that. So here's what you're looking for as you graph this. When, before you hit graph, you're going to look, it's going to start here and do this, and do this, and do that, in that order. That's what you're looking for. So when you hit graph, watch for that order. Step size really, really small. Step size got to be small. That's right. Got to slow it down. If you went too fast, hit window, hit your, uh, your theta step size, make it like 0.05 or something. Hmm. Got to slow it down a little. And you're looking for the order in which it draws the graph. <laughs> <laughs> you see how this is working? So if I want one complete leap, the worst thing I would want to do would be to draw from 0 to pi over 2. Because look what's going to happen from here to here. What's going to happen to that area? It's going to completely cancel out. It would be better for me if I chose negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, or 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. I'm going to choose negative... negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. 
In fact, before I even start doing this, I'm going to notice that I've got some symmetry going on here. This entire top half of this pedal, if I just find that area and then double that, you see that that'll give me the bottom half as well? So when I set up my integral, I can do this. Initial integral. Using all the information that I just gave you. Using some symmetry, I can get to here. So I go from 0 to pi over 4, this top chunk only. I'm going to let you wrestle with that for a few minutes since you are now all integral experts. Okay. 